So in this video, we're going to begin talking about stereochemistry. We started previously on Friday, and we're going to continue uh, discussing this topic. So what will you learn from this video? We're going to talk about stereoisomers, uh, how to describe enantiomers. We're going to do a little bit of visualizing molecules in 3D and um, determining configuration. And in determining configuration, before we do that, we're going to have to review the con ingo prelog priority rules because some of you may not have been um, exposed to that yet. We're also going to determine orientation around the chiral center um, and I'll talk more about that when we get to it. So what is chirality? We talked about handedness and left hand and right hand uh, and chirality arises from a molecule containing a carbon or a chiral center that has four different substituents attached to it right that had that is non symmetrical and also uh, that's sp3 hybridized all right and so as a consequence of these three things the four different substituents the um, asymmetry and being sp3 hybridized the mirror images of any molecule that's chiral are going to be non superimposable so we're going to talk about that so what does this really mean if you know for stereoisomers we talked about molecules having the same structure but different 3d orientation all right so if that's the case what do we mean by 3d orientation let's talk about that a little bit more but first um Let's look at uh, what a stereoisomer is in terms, or what an enantiomer is in terms of stereoisomer. So here's my stereoisomer, and then here is the mirror image of that stereoisomer. And we talked about the fact that the, this carbon has four different substituents around it. It's not symmetrical, and it's sp3 hybridized. So here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four substituents. Uh, the carbon is sp3 hybridized and if we look at the mirror image we can say that the mirror image is non superimposable so what do we mean by non superimposable uh, a really uh, short and sweet definition of that is that when I want when I make all the atoms point in the same direction they don't overlap and I'll show you that in a 3d model in one second so here's A, right, and here's the mirror image here, which is B, and you can see the 3D version of A, where the hydrogen is here, and then bromine is the big orange atom over here, and then CH3 is here, and OH is up top. And in the mirror image, here's bromine, here's CH3, and then here's OH up top, and hydrogen here. All right, so here's A, hydrogen is here, right, OH is here, bromine is here, and CH3 is here. So if we go back to the PowerPoint, you can see that this is A. CH3 is on the wedge, bromine is on the dash, OH is here, H is here. All right, so let's look at the 3D model. So here, I want to move this over. So I'm just going to drag this this way. And I'm going to paste in. B, but before I do that, here's B, remember, BR is on the dash, CH3 is on the wedge, and it's facing A, so let's paste in B here, so here we go, we'll paste in B, and this is B, and I'm going to turn B exactly like it was when we saw it on the other, on the slide, so I'm going to rotate this, so I'm going to turn this around, alright, and I need to change the Z, all right, so I'm turning this around here, and now if we look at B, again, these two are in, this is the mirror in the middle, CH3 is here facing this CH3, bromine is here facing this CH3, OH and OH are here. Now, what I mean by non-superimposable is that if I take B and rotate it so that all the atoms are pointed the same direction, if you'll notice, on A, here, 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 all these atoms are facing basically this way right facing to the right and so if I take B I'm going to highlight it 
and then I want to rotate that so I want to take B and turn it this way so that all the atoms are facing the same direction get the Z corrected all right what you notice is that I need to highlight it again what you'll notice is this right these two no matter what I do I cannot overlap them right that's all non superimposable means I can't take B and lay it on top of A and have everything to match up right the hydrogens will match up yes but this is the CH3 where this is bromine over here in B this is bromine where this is CH3 over here in B so when you hear that term non superimposable all it really means is that I can never take the image and the mirror image and lay them on top of one another so that all of the atoms line up so where does this 3D orientation come from uh, well let's think about it now when we're talking about a chiral center we're talking about a carbon that has four different groups attached and those groups are attached in a particular order meaning that they're arranged either uh, clockwise or counterclockwise based on their priority now priority uh, some of you may not have been exposed to the Kahn Ingo prelog rules but for priority um, it's based on atomic mass right and so let's look at uh, a situation where we have to determine the priority of each group attached to the chiral center right so we base it on the atomic mass um, of the atom that's attached to the chiral center and its range is from 1 to 4, 4 being the lowest or the least important group and then 1 being the highest or the most important group. Hydrogen compared to any other atom is always going to be your lowest priority group unless there's a lone pair which also acts as a group and that's the only group that has a lower priority than hydrogen. Alright so let's look at this molecule we know what the atomic mass for oxygen is we know what the atomic mass for bromine is it's 79 we know what the atomic mass for oxygen is right and we also know what the atomic mass for carbon is carbon is 12 oxygen is 16 hydrogen is 1 all right so comparing these atoms the highest priority atom is going to be bromine right because bromine has a an atomic mass of 79 now the two group three groups that are left right up between oxygen and carbon because what we're doing is we're looking at the first atom that's attached to the chiral center so from this carbon in the chiral center we go here to oxygen and then we go here to carbon right the question is now which one of these two has the highest priority well carbon has an atomic mass of 12 oxygen has an atomic mass of 16 so oxygen is next in line um, based on atomic mass and then carbon and then hydrogen is number four all right so sometimes you'll look at a chiral center and it will have uh, the same atom attached twice and so if that's the case then you have to keep moving or keep going down the chain until a point of difference is reached a point of difference is reached so let's look at this molecule right here and notice that I'm, I'm highlighting here that these are, atoms are both carbon right we know that this is oxygen this is hydrogen this is the chiral center so here's carbon and here's carbon now which one of those two groups has the highest priority because the first atom here is carbon right so then we have to keep looking so if we look here here's a carbon and then we look here here's a carbon now on this carbon it has three hydrogens attached to it whereas this carbon has another carbon attached to it and so based on priority this side is going to be higher priority than this side because this carbon is attached to carbon and which is attached to another carbon whereas this carbon is attached to carbon and then that carbon here is attached to hydrogen alright so priority is as follows oxygen is one the left side here is two and then the right side is three and then obviously hydrogen is four all right let's look at another one right look at these look at this chiral center here's a carbon here in the middle and it's attached to a carbon on this side 
and a carbon on this side and an oxygen here all right so now the question is which one of these two carbons is highest priority well this carbon is bound to oxygen well so is this one the difference is this carbon has a double bond to this oxygen whereas this carbon has a single bond to oxygen and so over here we can say um, a way to, another way to put this is that this carbon is actually bound to oxygen twice whereas this carbon is only bound to oxygen once and so this carbon is going to have the higher priority All right so this carb the carbon on this side is going to have a, a B2 after oxygen obviously because this has, has the higher atomic mass when you compare it to carbon and then this, the carbon over here is going to be three because this carbon has two bonds to oxygen whereas this one only has one All right so the question is for this molecule can you determine the priority of each of the groups attached to the chiral center